Uh, hello, uh, thanks for finding this video. This is going to be me in Phoenix Mog's QEdit tutorial series. Don't know how many parts it's going to be yet, but we hope to make things simpl simpler to understand because obviously this isn't an easy program to understand. And we just want to explain uh, how to do basic stuff. So this episode will be mostly focused on just explaining what quest files are uh, how to put down uh, some objects and stuff and some simple stuff to get you started in the script and uh, we actually are going to showcase uh, what we're doing in live action we're actually going to test the quest at the end of the, this the episode and just to see what we did so you get to see a little bit of uh, everything uh, at the end so with that being said I will start explaining a little bit about the file types. So with QEdit, you have a few different file types that you can use. So let's say you go to load, and if you use this drop down menu over here, you'll get raw, compressed, server quest file, BB server quest file, download, and quest project. Uh, we're mainly going to be working in server quest file. It's uh, the basic uh, .qst format. Um, compressed format you can use for GameCube uh, quests if you want to. I suggest you stick with server quest file just because it is a more stable file type. And sometimes QEdit has a issue opening compressed file types. So I would recommend just sticking with server quest file. You could even is. This file type also works for Blueburst, so it's very versatile. So we're going to be working in this. I already have the file that we're working with open already. So that's basically it. And PhoenixMog is going to start talking about function zero. The script is something that we will delve into multiple times. Uh, it's basically all of the order that the quest is going to function itself in. And function zero is the most basic thing that the quest always runs when it starts. Uh, the script itself likes to run from a top-down perspective, so it'll always do the first thing it comes to until it hits specific opcodes. Opcodes are the functions that will determine what the quest will actually perform. So set for example, we want to go start the script down. This one is an episode 2 quest, so it already has a set episode 1 in here. This, this value is in a hex number, and you can check whether it's in hex or decimal and set to your preference while you're working on it. I usually do decimal, but in larger numbers I would use hex just so that I have that available to me. So say we wanted to start a quest that starts in the episode 2, Pioneer 2. Uh, the first thing that we need here is this map designate x that's on screen. And the numbers for that specifically, these registers are completely arbitrary. Whatever you set them to is what will work for you. Think of it as like a style. So if we just change this one, so we set it to 18 in decimal or 12 in hex, the second one to 18 or 12 in hex, and change this 63 to a zero, these five registers, and then setting map designate x to the first register in the series, Doing this will load Pioneer 2 in the first slot of your areas in the top left corner. Now say we want to be able to warp down to Temple when we get there. We're going to go to the opcodes and you can either do the drop down bar and find the opcode yourself or you, you can type it in. We're looking for set main warp. What we're setting here for the set main warp is going to be 1. It is the first area in episode 2. And then 
the end of the function, all we need is this ret. This basically tells the script that the control returns to the player. You may see some scripts that use NOP, which stands for no operation. It just basically means nothing happens. But ret must always end on a function. Otherwise, you will either crash or you will have no options to you once that function completes. And from there, um, I'm going to let Kayak talk about the QEdit wiki. Okay, so I actually have editing privileges on QEdit wiki. So in my spare time, we often look at opcodes to see what they do, and we document them. So I'm on the main page here of the QEdit wiki, and you have a whole bunch of things available to you. You even have a download. You can download QEdit from here as well. Uh, it's somewhere on this page. But um, if you go to the opcodes tab, you're basically going to get every single opcode that exists in PSO. And these names, these are just the names that uh, people have given them over time. Um, they're not what PSO calls them. They are just, it's going to just be easier for people to understand. So if we just look at map designate X, you'll see what everything ex was explained here in more detailed fashion. So some stuff may not be labeled, like in red, but we do know how to use some of them. It's just a matter of labeling them. And you also find what reserve registers are here to, um, you know, it's just these registers we tend to reserve for specific uh, purposes within the quest. So this is always good to look at. Those ones are hard coded to do what they do. Yep. Yep. And there's a whole other bunch of information on this wiki and I'm not going to go into it now because that's just too much, but you know, we'll, we'll post a link in the video description of the QEdit wiki and where to download QEdit. We'll, we'll have all of that listed there so you can just go in there and take a look for yourself. Back to QEdit. Next we have... Um... Start placing some stuff. Okay. So you have a script ready to go and you just want to start placing some things down. Um, episode 2 Pioneer 2 is quite uh, wide as you can see from the screen here. This room on the far right is the main shopping area, the Hunter's Guild, etc. These two rooms here is the ones that are used in like Maximum Attack or like Gallon Shop. And then this room on the far left here is the laboratory. So we're going to start the quest in the laboratory. The first thing that you want to have is you want to have an object called a player set. The player set basically says spawn here. So we'll put one at about the same location that you would be when you return to Pioneer 2 from somewhere. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to need the actual portal that takes us down to Temple. The one we're looking for here is Main Raggle Teleporter. This one is in one of those two rooms in the side. We'll just put one over here on the right. Now, if we want to make it warp to temple, we have to have in the script itself the set main warp 1. This tells the main warp on Pioneer 2 where your available locations are. So when we start the quest, the only option for this portal will be temple alpha. So we have a player set, we have a portal. Now we need to activate temple alpha. And to do that, we will do a similar thing that we used for Pioneer 2. We'll go into the script. We'll add some leddies, which is basically just a function to set some numbers and functions. This one is going to have 19 for Temple Alpha. So the first two registers will be 19. The next three will be 0. We're not going to use a variation on this.
and the register that the map designate X calls is always the first one. It checks the registers in sequence to determine what to load. So now we'll be able to load into Temple. Make sure that you have all the available areas that you want in your quest checked in the top left area. This is how it will save objects and monster data in these. And we're going to place the starting room in this one with the bridge here. So the first thing we're going to need, of course, is a player set. We'll spawn a player set on the north end of this room here. We'll spawn a teleporter back to Pioneer 2. And we'll put this near the north door. From here, for testing purposes, we're just going to spawn a poison lily. So we will get an object called event collision. It defaults to 30 range, and when you place it, you'll see the range radius in a physical form. If you happen to place something in an area where you don't like it, you can edit the data and you can also move it. So if I put this a little too close to the player set here, like I don't want, I'll just move it a little more south so that it's in an area where you just walk to it. Now, from here, we're going to spawn a poison lily. So we'll get poison lily. And the important thing here is that we want to set the wave to not be zero. A zero wave can cause problems for some quests, and a wave set to zero makes a monster always spawn the moment it can. So by setting it to one, we'll be spawning a lily that will be when we walk in this event collision. We're going to put this next to the portal. Now, to spawn it, we need to set the data for this event collision with some specific parameters. If we go into edit data, we will see that there is a label down here at the bottom that's called event number. This is what's going to be used to load individual waves and trigger some events on the map. Since this is our first one, we'll just label this one. For the map event now, this pulls up a window that will feature all of the waves, doors unlocking, objects that will appear based on the parameters that you set. For this poison lily, we're just going to have it be one. All waves need a pound symbol in front of them. And the three things that each wave needs is a section, which is the room number. This room specifically is 50, and I will show you this information shortly. The second is wave, which is the number of the wave that the monster is set to. This one is wave one. And then the last thing it needs is delay. Delay is the amount of frames before it actually spawns on the screen. Just like with wave zero, we do not want delay to be zero because that can cause problems in some quests. One is acceptable, but depending on what you want to do, delay is up to your judgment. But, of course, don't make it too long, otherwise you'll be waiting more than actually playing. So for this one, we'll set it to 25 frames. It's just about a second. And then say, if we had a door, we would have a unlock and then we'll make the door lock number one. Now, if we were to place a door, we'll place the door right behind the portal. You can edit the data here to do locks. This is mostly just going to be for tutorial purposes. We'll get into this more in depth later. The switch ID for this will be one, which will be triggered after the lily dies. 
Now that all these objects are in place, we can now test the quest and see if what we did actually works. Okay, so I'm going to take over here. You always want to save your progress in QEdit as much as possible. Sometimes things crash unexpectedly and you don't want to lose data you've been working on for a long time. You know, setting one monster here, setting these couple objects, it, you know, it's not much, but it took a, f a few minutes to do. So always save. So I'm just going to name this QEdit tutorial. I already have it here, so it just comes up. And I already have the server quest file GC. You have all these format file types to save too. I always just use server quest file GC because we are GameCube developers. Save. And it will over, you won't get an overwrite uh, message or anything, so just be aware of that. Um, another thing of how he got the map section data is if you click on let's say this poison lily this is actually in map section 141 so I will move him slightly south and it should put him in move 50 yep additionally you can hit this show room ID button up here and it shows you every single room ID on the map so that's what I like to use as well okay so let's resave this again Okay, so once you have your your t your file ready and you've put it up on a place you can test it, next you go and load your quest. So Okay, so as you can see, we're now in the lab. There's not much here because we haven't placed any NPCs or anything. But we do have our warp here. So with any luck, taking this warp should put us right in Temple Alpha. Okay, so we put... we spawned exactly where we set it our teleporter is right there so if I walk down my lily spawned hooray we spawned an enemy so and if it works properly I can kill this lily and the door opens that will be all for today Hopefully now you understand a little more about QEdit works. Uh, stay tuned for the next couple parts. We have more coming on the way. Thanks for watching.